In this little video, I'm going to take a look at solving systems of three equations, three unknowns, using just the substitution method. Now, uh, learning the substitution and the elimination method is a good thing, I think, in the long run, because it will kind of take care of some of the issues we're going to have up front. It is not incorrect to choose one method over the other or to use a combination of them. All of them will work. All three ideas will work. It's just that some problems lend themselves better to one particular method over the other. So what I'm going to do in this particular problem is I'm going to use only substitution to solve it. So we need a battle plan here. Very first thing we want to do is we want to label these in equations. And I'm going to label them as 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to label that one in green. OK. And now, I need to solve one of these equations for one of the variables. Now, it looks to me like uh, I've got, oh, I've got some mixed up uh, signs here in, in 1, but I've got z by itself. So if I just subtracted 2x and added 3y to both sides, I'd solve for z. Uh, down here, however, I can more easily just add z to both sides, subtract 5, and life is a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and solve equation 3 for z. That's going to be my first step. So I'm going to solve equation 3. It doesn't matter which one you pick and which letter you pick. Oop, I don't want to really call it equation 3. I just want to call it circle 3. All right. So I'm going to solve equation 3 for z. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that value of z into the other two equations. So after I write this down here, 4x plus 6y minus z is equal to 5. I'm going to add z to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. That way only z is over on the right and everything else is on the left. So I get 4x plus 6y minus 5 is equal to z. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that value of z and I'm going to substitute that into equation 1 for z. When I get done with this, I'm going to rename equation 1 as equation A. And the reason for it is it's easier for me to keep track of what I've done when. So when it comes time to start substituting back into things, I go back up to the correct level. See, so we have to be very cautious and be very, very good secretaries and write down exactly what we're doing. So equation 1 is going to look like 2x minus 3y plus, and now my z value is 4x plus 6y minus 5, and then that all of that equals negative 1. You'll notice that the, the 5 that came out of equation 3 does not combine in any way or replace the negative 1 in equation 1. It's all contained in the substitution of z. So now, we've gone ahead and substituted z, substitute z into equation 1. When I combine these like terms, I'm going to move all of the numbers over to the, to the right side, and then I'm going to make, turn that into equation A. So I take 2x plus 4x equals 6x. Negative 3y plus 6y gives me a, a positive, positive, a positive 3y. And then if I distribute this positive 1 over the negative 5, I get a negative 5. And I'm going to add that 5 to both sides, leaving me with equals 4. And I'm going to call that equation equation A. We'll see in a little bit why I do that. I'm going to just repeat the same process, but with equation 2. So I'm going to substitute z into equation 2. So equation 2 comes around as 6x minus 9y minus 4 times the quantity. I'll be careful here. We're going to have to do some of this distribution. And this is 4x plus 6y minus 5 for the value of z. All of that equals 4. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and snatch up this negative 4 here, and I'm going to distribute that to all three terms inside the parentheses. We brought that over from z, and so now we have 6x minus 9y minus 16x minus, well, let's see, I'll, I'll start losing my place here. 4 times 6 is 24 minus 24y. And then I have a negative 4 and a negative 5 make a positive 20 when you multiply those, and you get 4. Finally, I'm going to combine all like terms and turn this whole mess into equation B. So I combine my x's, and I have 6 minus 16, I get a, pot, or a negative 10x. And then I have, oops, cross those out, I have a negative 9y and a negative 24y, that's going to give me a negative 33y. And those cross out. And then I have a plus 20, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, and that's going to give me a negative 16. And so equation B is going to be negative 10x minus 33y is equal to a negative 16. Okay, so now that I've gotten it down to two equations, two unknowns, A and B, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite those down here because we're going to work with those independently of what we just did. So, equation A, 6x plus 3y equals 4, and equation B, come on now, equation B was negative 10x, minus 33y is equal to negative 16. Okay, I'm going to swap out colors here, because what I'm going to do is I need to use substitution again to solve for one of the variables. And if I look here, if I divide through by 3 to solve for y and a, I get a, a, a th 4 thirds somewhere. So I'm going to get a fraction. I don't really care to work in fractions. So I'm going to do something a little different. Notice down here that I have all negatives. You could change those to all positives by multiplying through by negative 1. That's not really going to be a huge concern for me. However, if you don't like negatives, you can you certainly do that. What I'm going to do is instead of trying to replace y or x, I'm actually going to replace negative 33y. In order to do that, I need to go ahead and I need to solve for 3y and when I do that I get 3y is equal to negative 6x plus 44 and if I multiply this whole mess by negative 11 then I get negative 33y is equal to 66x minus oops that's not 44 I apologize I jumped the gun. This is negative 6x plus 4 in that first step. When you multiply the 11 through, you get a negative 44. I was, I was jumping the gun on my multiplication there. So now, this is going to be my substitution equation. And I'm going to take that, and wherever I see a negative 33y, I'm going to take all of this stuff. I'm going to dump it right in there. Now, in order to rewrite this so that it works, I'm going to think about it as negative 10x plus negative 33y is equal to negative 16. If I think about it like that, wherever I see a negative 33y, I plug in 66x minus 44 in parentheses. So now, if as I do this, and I'm going to go ahead and switch colors to white because we're just about done, we have negative 10x plus, in parentheses, 66x minus 44 is equal to a negative 16. And as I combine like terms, I get 56x minus 44 is equal to negative 16. I add 44 to both sides. And when I do this, I get 56x is equal to and this is going to give me 32. No, nope, not 32. No, nope, 28. I got to fix my math. 
28. So if I go ahead and I divide, my brush is getting a little big for its britches here. If I go ahead and I divide by 56, and I reduce over on that right side, I get x is equal to 1 half. So now I found the value of x. You're going to take this, and because you solved because you've solved A to find or to substitute in for B and then solve B for X, you can now, since you've gone through all of that, substitute the value of X back into either A or B and you can go about your business for finding Y. I'm going to choose A. And so I'm going to take X equals one half and I'm going to put that in equation A so that I can find the value of Y. Six times one half plus three y is equal to four. Six times one half is three, so three plus three y is equal to four. If I subtract three from both sides, I get three y is equal to one. Dividing by three gives me y is equal to one third. There's y. So now I can go ahead and take the values of x and y, go back up here, way, way back. And I have a couple of, I have actually f uh, four choices here. Six if you really want to go out on a limb. But I have a choice here. I have x's and y's and then I can solve for z immediately. Or I can substitute back into any one of the original equations. And so I can solve, I can shove it back. Now if you go shove it back into equation three, that's exactly the same as doing this. So you might as well, you know, have confidence in your mathematical ability and just throw it into the green here. But you could kind of go at, as an independent route, you could go back and say, okay, I'm going to shove it back into equation one, which is what I'm going to do because I like working a little independently, just as a check. So I take 2x minus 3y plus z equals negative 1. 2x minus 3y plus z equals negative 1. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my value of x, shove it into my x term, take the value of y, shove it into my y term, and then I'm going to solve for z. So I get 2 times 1 half minus 3 times 1 third plus z is equal to negative 1. Now, recognize that 2 times 1 half is 1, minus 3 times 1 third is 1, plus z. The 1 minus 1 cancels. These eliminate, making 0. All that's left is z equals negative 1. So when I put them all together, I have three values. I have x is equal to 1 half. I have y is equal to one-third, and I have z is equal to negative one. Since I have all three uh, coordinates, this is a unique solution, and therefore in three space, or in three dimensions, all three of these planes meet at a single point, and that point is the point one-half, one-third, negative one. And that's solving a system of three variables, and three equations using only substitution. It might be nice to use addition. Probably could have saved ourselves quite a bit of issue with that. However, it can be done this way.